Hello and welcome to Reliance General Insurance presents Autocar Dialogues. Now the customer is king. This is an oft heard phrase which still rings true. But today's new age customer expects the very best in products and services and is totally tech savvy. How is this impacting the automobile industry? <coughs> we'll find out with this esteemed set of panelists that I have here today. Let me introduce them to you. First up we have Ashish Kale who is the MD of Provincial Group. Welcome to the show Ashish. Hi. We have uh, Latif Hussain, MD at the Sapphire Motors Private Limited, Pranav Nanda, the MD at Concept Group, and Manoj Lalwani, he's the CMD at Ritu Automobiles. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Manoj, let's start with you. Now, the customer obviously has changed a lot over the years. How has that uh, changed the way that automobile dealers are in interacting with them? Nowadays, the digitalization plays a very big role. Yeah. Most of the customers, they check they verified their mm -hmm. needs from their web portals okay, itself right. and they started and their search is there so for them to such an educated customer mm -hmm. it's a very important you had to be polish your manpower mm -hmm. you have to uh, upgrade yourself yes in this regards mm -hmm. and their expectation and we should reach to the expectation of the customers. Okay. Uh, Pranav, so you know what Manoj has spoken about, which is the, uh, I believe the phrase is research online, purchase offline. Has this helped the dealer because an educated customer has come or has it not helped you because the customer is asking too many questions that they don't need to know information about? No, I, I think a little bit about what you started off with. I mean, the evolution of the Indian customer. Mm. I mean, if you look at it, I think India has evolved very fast yeah. compared to the other countries. If you were taking it about you know, 10 to 12 years ago, a customer would look at buying a car for the next 10 years. Mm. And then it came down to 7 years, 5 years, and today's date, a kind of life cycle of a car would be about 3 odd years. Right. Now, when he is looking at buying a car today, I don't think <coughs> it's any longer, it isn't a luxury, it's more of a necessity one. And it is his image too. Mm. So, technology does play a very major fact. I mean, if you look at the car companies now bringing in more and more features, Bluetooth, hands-free, yeah. steering controls, yeah. climate control, touch screen audio. I mean, it's evolving. The more features, the better the car. Yes. It's not so much just on the engine capacity anymore. And these features is. have become like standard. They expect standard. these. They're expected. I mean, they give me a car without it is more like, you know, <laughs> like what? When I go to the malls, there are very there, very often there are those kind of stalls or kiosks where there's a car there and there's mm. a person then pop up stores pop up stores as yeah. you could co as you mm. call them. How important are those? Are they still relevant or is it all about just maybe online and my uh, showroom? I think customers' expectations are now seamless. Mm. It's no more what did I experience in A brand dealership yeah. and yeah. a B brand dealership. Mm. It is what I experienced probably at a high street in a mall. Mm -hmm. I want the same experience. Um, you know, uh, even when I'm buying a car. Hmm. So I think yes, uh, uh, we are getting there. The future is that you will get uh, kiosk where probably you will have virtual reality or you will have uh, so-called digitalization. We use technology, it's a very broad based term. But to narrow it down, yes, a lot of touch and feel in terms of touch and feel interface, uh, tablets, uh, right. video walls. Ashish, from your personal experience, how has it been dealing with a customer of now say 2017 as opposed to a customer of maybe 2007, 2005? I think the major difference is obviously the use of uh, digital media. Right. As Pranav rightly said that India has evolved very fast. Mm. So uh, we can categorize the needs of the customer in two parts. One is the information. So with evolve, uh, the market getting evolved, competition has also come in quite a lot. Mm. Customer has too much of a choice today. It's very difficult for him to go physically to every dealership and look at every model. Mm. I think at every 15,000 rupees price point, you'll have a different variant today. Right. So a lot of it is also need based that he goes online and zeroes down on two, three, four models that he wants to uh, uh, look at mm -hmm. depending on his budget and his choice. The other part is I don't think in India even today with the customer preferences changing, youth being there, digital becoming very popular, the aspect of the relationship mm. uh, has gone away. That is where dealers come yes. in. So I think uh, it's, a, it's a combination of both. The customer does a research online, mm -hmm. uh, narrows down on two, three, four projects, and then from there on, he comes into the relationship aspects where he visits our dealership. Right. And as uh, Manoj Bhai said, that we need to give him an experience which is which he's used to. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of hygiene factors have uh, come in, which are earlier which used to be 
डिफरेंशिएटर आर नाउ एक्सपेक्टेड ओके सो आई थिंक डीलर्स हैव टू कीप इवॉल्विंग दैट इट्स अ वेरी वेरी डायनामिक मार्केट द कस्टमर इज वेरी डायनामिक इज नीड्स आर चेंजिंग एवरी डे वेरी ट्रू मतलब जी नो दिस अदर पॉइंट दैट आशीष आल्सो स्पोक अबाउट इज द सम थिंग्स व्हिच वर अर्लियर जस्ट सपोज्ड टू बी स्पेशल डिफरेंशिएटर्स एंड नाउ आर स्टैंडर्ड is this also besides the sales is this also very evident on the servicing part of so of course a customer nowadays he wants two things first quality service another speed services ha ah. now the quality service is the right of the customer speed services is a benefit but both not only for the customer but for the dealer like in the urban areas you will find the infrastructure is very costly it's a very difficult to um, accommodate the cars and you cannot increase the area but at the same time you can increase the manpower all right manpower only technicians those who can uh, make the services not the uh, supportive staff so you are technicians like previously it was a time when a uh, one technician was serving on a one bay now it's get change from one technician to two technician base it uh, helpful for the both customers as well as for the uh, mm-hmm. dealers pranav this point just one of the points that uh, manoj spoke about uh, i want to use it in a different way the inventory part so while he says you know a lot of uh, cost has like i mean you are increasing the mechanics for example the technicians is that on the actual product so do you think that uh, having a larger inventory now is more uh, is better or should be done or is it a time to have a leaner inventory and do kind of like a just in time delivery to the consumer see i think a leaner inventory is any day better i mean inventory definitely is required like we were with evolving times no one is willing to wait so you is know? it more that now the customer says that okay i'm ready today i've this because they are pretty much prepared when they come in and they say okay i'm done this is the car i want to buy today i'll make your payment tomorrow can i get the car day after is exactly like that you see the earlier times when a finance process there was a time around to take at least 15 20 days today it finance will probably take 3 to 4 days at max mm-hmm. you know probably in some cases the existing customer probably a day it's as soon as the customer signs the papers yeah so now the minute you have decided you want it Other than probably if you're the premium car, where you're looking for a particular custom-made right. car or something, nobody is willing to wait. So yes, inventory uh, on hand does really help because it's part of the customer uh, satisfaction. He gets his car, he's happy. Latif, I want to talk to you about technology. So, um, virtual reality headsets are making a mark in the country, and of, of course globally. Do you think the time is? coming approaching very soon where i could sit at home and i have a virtual reality headset and i can see myself in a car in two three different cars and say all right pretty much this is the car i want to buy true um you know firstly just to just to put certain facts uh, over here that a uh, lot of people today of course already research online i met somebody mm-hmm. from google who heads the automotive division and he was telling me that be more than 90% of the people research online and when they come to the dealership a lot of them about 70% of them do fact checking mm-hmm. when they're actually talking to all right uh, the the sales, the, the sales executive uh, so basically transparency is the key uh, so a well educated customer firstly is great for us uh, going back yeah. to the initial <laughs> question which you were asking now connected to that virtual reality it's already there i think people are already developing a lot of uh, mechanisms i think couple of car portals have already invested in it and i think you will I don't think the time is uh, too uh, far right now when mm-hmm. you'll actually see this happening. The issue is that a lot of customers do not have the hardware <coughs> today to to support it. But I think technology is only getting cheaper and it's a reality that probably we'll see that in a year or two from now few OEs will start taking the steps, uh, maybe tiny steps but in that direction where uh, I could sit in my living room and the thought if it crosses my mind that I need to buy a particular car, will put on my headset, walk mm-hmm. through the entire car, mm-hmm. interior, exterior, mm-hmm. open the engine. check exactly what's happening inside uh, and it's just going to make a buyer much more well educated and the great thing about it is that our sales executives will become far more talented because they will have to invest more energy now uh, in in ensuring that what they're talking to customer Uh, is adding value to them because they already know everything about the car but is there a flip side to this i mean if you look at the other side of the coin the worry is that would this kind of curtail the work that a automobile dealer is doing so are you running out of a so job if i if i just take the virtual reality point i think it could again as i said india is a relationship 
yes okay this market and in india if you see today majority small cars are selling yes. so the first time customer is there mm -hmm. so he is looking for that experience so i think right. along with virtual rea reality you also have a combination of uh, video calling face to face right which right. the customer might not have time to visit your dealership mm -hmm. but you can definitely connect with him with 4g now being there and everything right right so i think that would also mean what manoj is saying we will have to have proper trained manpower because that is not that day is not far away where he'll sit in his home research everything and maybe want to visit a dealership sitting at his home so uh, the car aspect will be taken care by the virtual reality right. gear but uh, a face to face talk can happen through through required. yeah so it can happen through Uh, video calling, which I foresee in in the near future. But if you wanted to make a point yeah, before, I and make I have a point question for you, because I think the common thing which we hear about is manpower. And trust me, today no youngster who is in graduating today, whether he is in engineering or commerce, I don't think he has automobile dealership as his career primary career motive. So the key point for us is is basically to invest heavily into training. We talk about technology. You need people who could mm. really use it. Be make this as, as an enabler. to really sell well to the customers i would say are far faster in terms of adopting it than most of us selling it right and trust me when you don't have motivated manpower which is coming to this industry looking at this as a primary job right uh, it's going to be very difficult so i think as dealers we really need to invest heavily into training with the technology aspect it starts and begins there and if you can sanitize your manpower about mm. it and is is it rightly said emotional quotient you need to appeal it but these are enablers we are not right. saying that it'll you know uh, take away the touch and feel but you will get a far more educated lot of customers coming to your uh, division right uh, prav you know uh, one thought i have is when we talk about the customer so like ashish also said there's a lot of the middle class that is going in a lot of first time buyers were buying small cars but the profile has also changed from a point of time where it would be you know maybe 20 years ago where it'd be a, a family man who's buying a car but now youngsters buying the car and especially a lot of women coming in to buy uh, a car uh, how has that changed it from a dealer's perspective of managing and uh, interacting with that customer how do you handle those differing needs indian customers very sentimental when it comes to buying a car mm -hmm. if you look at it it's a sentimental buy it's a family decision be it a youngster or an old person the youngster will come with his parents an old person will bring his kids the woman will come with the husband or her boyfriend or whatever but it's still an emotional buy true That's, so, that's important. No, yeah. But with women and 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 children now becoming a part of the decision, uh, white is no more the most popular car <laughs> nowadays. You've got a lot of colorful <laughs> cars <laughs> <laughs> because uh, they are now big influencers in the decision. No doubt about it. I think today the comparison goes beyond. It's so seamless. So I would compare an e-commerce website service to me, to the way I'm getting uh, the service from an uh, auto dealership. And okay. and today there's no distinction. You know, everything is compared with every other product or service. And that's why I think it's they are far more empowered. Mm -hmm. They can today a negative opinion is travels much faster today yeah, through true, social media. Uh, so as I said, you know, it's just all for good because it's just making us far more aware as dealers and you know, continuously making us evolve to really uh, adapt to the changing needs. And Ashish, so now the customer is actually spoiled for choice, not just by dealerships, by way of mm. the cars. I mean, yeah. you've got multiple variants of multiple manufacturers in that same segment. True. Okay. how is that for you because is the customer really confused is that too much spoiled for too much choice yeah so uh, one thing that has uh, happened definitely is the the time from uh, the customer deciding to buy a car to his purchase mm. that period has gone up no doubt okay. about it but as i said uh, the e-commerce has actually helped dealerships uh, because they it's it's very convenient for a customer even from his phone to go get into the specifics that he wants and then zero down on three or four models mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it did initially uh, uh, be a pr trouble for us because as uh, pranav said we had to stock higher uh, <coughs> the customer wants to see the car he will not look at a brochure or a leaflet right. but now with zeroing in on the uh, the social media websites it's it's better for us that once he walks in he's more specific towards what his needs are Latif what about the use of uh, technology from the perspective of running a business as a dealership so you know they talk about big data and the yes. internet of things is that something that you foresee in the next couple of years i mean big companies big mnc's are talking about it very emphatically but is that something you think which will percolate down to dealership levels i'm not talking like a manufacturer but to a dealership to you guys yes today i would say the big a bigger differentiator in terms of a good efficient dealership is going to be 
how we use the technology within rather than how do we interface with the customer. So, so from uh, let's say a simple app, a message board, which can go all the way from the CEO to the bottom level executive. Today I've seen, it's like Chinese whispers. The scheme yes, which is communicated, it probably ends up with 20, 30% of the sales executive having some kind of uh, okay. uh, you know, uh, confusion about how it really operates. So yes, a single interface which could really uh, bring the entire dealerships, uh, uh, you know, the management system and MIS on an app platform with a smartphone, and the inquiry management being over there, eliminate the paperwork. It'll just bring in transparency, avoid duplication, and definitely this is, these are going to be some great enablers uh, for us to uh, to move forward and make things a lot more efficient. Uh, and I'm sure in the next couple of years we'll get there, but it's just that uh, today I think the because of limited resources, mm -hmm. ideas are there. Right. We all have wonderful ideas. <laughs> it's just that I guess uh, uh, they're too expensive today probably, you know, uh, mm -hmm. even today to invest in such technologies. And we need a little more well-trained manpower and probably then it's the right time for us to really invest uh, in it. But I think it's going to come from the startup space. I okay. still believe it's <laughs> going to be someone outside the industry and that it al already has been. Right, you know, people from outside the industry have made more difference to us than uh, we ourselves. Yeah, in fact, the in fact, uh, uh, this is one thing that's always come mm -hmm. up is the when we talk automobile, Pranav, as you talk about Uber, Ola, and how they have um, people have started. I don't know how more of companies now are buying cars as opposed to individuals. Is are you seeing some kind of trend emerging from that? No, I think I'm seeing a massive trend moving towards Uber and Ola. But probably you know, in the bigger cities like Delhi, Bombay, where I think. In a lot of cases, a person would think it makes a lot more sense to use an Uber or Ola than to buy his own car. Right. It is more practical. Mm -hmm. You're getting a car, you're getting a driver. I mean, yeah, true. And it's probably costing you lower than what you would yeah. to, to purchase a car. You don't have parking it. issues. I mean, yeah. it, it actually helps in a lot of ways. I think, and, and if you're looking at it, I mean, taxi sales have very strongly gone up over the past few months. And they're strongly rising uh, with every ongoing month. I think going ahead a year from now, you would see. A lot of taxis all across India, even in the smaller towns. Interesting. Manoj, just uh, your thoughts on the uh, aspect of when you talk about uh, technology being used by uh, customers. Now, I believe there's one manufacturer that lets you download an app and book a service uh, uh, on the app and stuff like that. Do you think that's just, again, a passing phase or will it actually kind of make In fact, uh, for the servicing the dealer, they are creating their own apps and nowadays it's a very easy if you are make calling calls to a customers again and again to book their services mm. sometimes they irritate okay. about all these things and nowadays they, you have the app you downloaded apps in their cell phones and they can book their services and rather to make uh, many calls no doubt uh, a CR department this their job to uh, remind them about their services but nowadays it's little bit get change nowadays customer they want such a technology so they can book their services well in advance Everything they plan one accordingly yes okay pranab uh, let's talk about one big uh, event that has shaken this full country in the last two months which is demonetization or currency ban yeah. how uh, has it impacted the automobile dealers i think as an indian you're used to having cash in your pocket yeah <laughs> for everything you know you're used to taking cash out and putting it down as a down payment or whatever probably having to use alternate means probably takes you some time to get used to so how are you seeing the customer adapt to this adopt it i think in december they seem to have adapted quite well mm -hmm. but uh, if i would look at it if, if we've seen a certain dip where used cars are concerned because used car sales would have usually been a lot of people who would have saved up money to buy a car, you know, a smaller car, about a lakh, lakh and a half, two lakhs. Yeah, yeah. They would prefer buying it off in cash. So that is money they would have saved up from some time to some time. So I think it's probably impacted those people right now because the rate of interest on used cars is way higher than that on a new car. Hmm. So that's probably the reason why people should save up money to buy one. Even right. rural is still badly affected. Uh, I come from Nagpur, so right. uh, around there. In the rural areas, cash was much more uh, in use than the cities. So I think the cities have adopted quite cities have adopted. fast I mean, into I think December. Going but ahead, if you know, is still recovering. finance companies bring down rates of interest on used cars, make financing a lot more easily available, hmm. increase the tenors on used cars. Those are things which could probably help in, you know, but what is the sense, that. again, this is open to everyone, true, true. Uh, is the sense of used car market as with in automobile dealers as yourselves are dealing with the used car market and the new car market. 
are people veering more to wanting to buy a new car? Not, and I'm not talking just in this limited period of like last two months after demonetization. I'm talking in the last maybe last three four years. How's the trend been? Are people more going for like okay, accepting a used car, or they want no, I want my new car, whether it's a big car, small car, whatever. So the acceptance is going up. Uh, reason is the organized players. Today, right. a used car comes like a showroom car. It comes with warranty. The quality of the car is okay. higher. It's not the entire market, but the organized players. Yes. So I think the organized players uh, are changing the market. But a new car is a new car in India. So, uh, yeah. Coming back to demonetization, huh. you know, I think government played uh, a trick six months in advance. They they did come up with TCS uh, on cash purchases or any car which is above mm -hmm. 10 lakhs. So I can tell you for sure at at my dealership, a cash transaction was close to 23% of the overall volume. It came down to 10% when TCS came, and now it's even lower. So I guess we were kind of the effect was little lower because uh, it was customers were already used to transacting. It's just that the, they were too busy handling their cash or probably yeah. standing yeah. in queues or whatever. Uh, is because of which the November was washed out. But it will. For sure, is will will is is a big uh, negative impact on the unorganized used car market, which means it will help us because mm -hmm. we are the, of course we, we belong to the organized uh, trade, and therefore a lot of customers will come to us. That's true. Uh, your thoughts on the way ahead for the next five or the next ten years? Your opinion on what is the customer going to be like, and maybe what the uh, automobile dealership or the industry can do to. Um, you know, meet the needs of this uh, of this customer. Uh, Ashish, if you'd like to start. I think uh, with demonetization, what is also happening is a lot of people are uh, coming onto the digital platform. Mm. So whatever uh, digital initiatives we were taking till now, I think that we will have to really uh, ramp up because a lot of people who are not used to this now have to use it. Latif, your thoughts? You know, last 10 years, the sales environment was uh, hard sell tactics, Souk style yeah. haggling of the customer, uh, which which probably uh, you know brought in a lot Holding of holding a jackknife to him. Exactly, buy it. I'll give you a little more. Lelo, Lelo, that simple people. So, man. so <laughs> that that probably left you know uh, implanted a a, a big uh, I would say trust deficit between you know, the sellers and the buyers. Uh, I think in today's age, it's an age of transparency because customer is well informed. I come back to that point. Uh, I think the next. If you say five years or ten years is all going to belong to, I know it may sound like a cliche, but to the cons consumers because they're right. so empowered, they're so well informed. Uh, the generation has changed, uh, you know. Uh, so I would say heavy investment into your human resource, ensuring that the attrition levels are low. Mm -hmm. You know, making sure that you get fresh mind people coming into the system, train them. You know, don't teach the old monkey tricks. Get yeah. some new yeah. guys into the system. Invest heavily into training, incentivize them to sell, you know, correctly rather than volumes to sell something with delight factor. I think this is really going to bring about change. A good, well-trained manpower is going to adopt to any technology. A final word from you. No, I mean, like you were mentioning, uh, the future of the automobile industry in India actually depends a lot on the government and on mm. the future policies because you've got a lot of things holding us back right now. GST for one. Yes. We don't know what's the future of that. How does that actually pan out? Does it make the cars cheaper, more expensive? Hmm. I mean, it's still in the black there. Uh, the Scrappage Act on yeah. the older cars, that's something which has been looked forward to for quite some time. Helps in reducing the emissions from hmm. Hmm. across the country. And that would be a big boon in sale of new cars. Right. So, I mean, the government policies is something going to play a major role. Like states in India are all very varied on tax. Octroyers, municipal taxes, you can't transfer Makes a car sense. from one state to another. Mm. So the actual future of the Indian automobile industry is a lot on the kind of policies that the government brings out and soon. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for talking to Thank me you. on this Thanks subject. So Thank you so Thank much you. for watching. You've been watching Reliance General Insurance presents Autocar Dialogues from the entire team. Thank you so much for watching.